get out of bed, throw your pajamas on the floor, get those clothes in the dryer, make yourself a coffee because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Boogie Face Lynn, and with me, as always, but still virtually, is Shia Wager. We have a great show for you guys planned out today. The rotation looks at Fortnite's exotic weapons. We'll tell you a story about Meowsles the cat in point of interest. And of course, we have everything the community's passing around in the low ground. Now, here's something interesting that I came across, Shio. There's a report of a Batman Fortnite crossover comic book series that will include unlockable skins and items. What's your take on this? I mean, last time we had Batman in the game, it was a kind of a cool experience of POI taking over the center of the map. I'm not sure if they can top that, but a comic book storyline, that's uh, pretty cool. It'll definitely appeal to a lot of our graphic novel fans, but up next, the rotation runs down the top five exotic weapons in Fortnite. Fortnite's strongest weapons are also its most interesting ones. While Chapter 1 mostly had more of the simple weapons with goofy items in the loot pool, Chapter 2 has had some pretty broken ones thanks to NPCs. The recent seasons have all had NPCs around the map, each with their own unique weapon that cannot be found anywhere else on the map. Season 5 has introduced a new currency called Gold that allows you to purchase said weapons from NPCs. Exotic weapons have their own rarity denoted by a sky blue color, not to be confused with mythic weapons that are denoted by a yellow background. Today we'll be taking you through the top five exotic weapons in Fortnite Chapter 2, Season 5. At number five, we have the Burst Squad Launcher, one of the newest exotics. This weapon can be obtained from Fish Stick at Coral Castle for just 600 gold. While we've already had the Quad Launcher in the game in Chapter 1, Season 5, it used to launch one rocket at a time. It was a legendary weapon that was dismissed as a weaker RPG, although it was fun to use in the unvaulted modes in Chapter 2. The new Burst Squad Launcher shoots all of them at once, landing approximately in the same area with each rocket having its own little explosion. This is reminiscent of the mechs from Season X, where you could shoot a barrage of rockets onto the enemy without giving them a chance to respond. Number four on our list is the Double Barrel Shotgun, also known as the Dub. This one can be purchased from the NPC Dummy for 600 gold. The Dub combined the Double Barrel Shotgun and Flint Knock Pistols. It also doesn't have the range issue of the Double Barrel Shotgun, where you have to be super close to be able to do any kind of significant damage. The weapon is fun to use and has a great range, almost coming close to the regular tactical shotgun. The kickback effect also gives you a lot of mobility advantages and can be used for moving around or even knocking players off during a build battle. At number three, we have the Storm Scout Sniper Rifle. This one can be acquired from Lexa at Hunter's Haven. This weapon was released in the regular loot pool in chapter one, but now it's an exotic. While it's not the best sniper when it comes to damage to players or structures, it gives you one of the biggest advantages in Fortnite, knowing where the next storm circle is going to be. It allows for easier rotations, lets you know where enemy players could be coming from, and saves you on a lot of running around. It isn't always worth carrying around because of its average damage output, but its advantage and utility is unparalleled. Number two on our list is the Dragon's Breath Sniper. This one can be acquired from the NPC Blaze for about 1,200 gold. You can find Blaze standing in the clearing south of Sweaty Sands. The Dragon's Breath Sniper adds the fire element of the Dragon's Breath Shotgun to a traditional sniper. It feels good to use, but isn't heavy or clunky like the Heavy Sniper. Being able to set structures on fire from a distance is always good, something the Dragon's Breath Shotgun was unable to do. This is a great weapon to sit back and set enemy builds on fire from a distance while the rest of your team sneaks up on them from behind. At number one, we have the Shadow Tracker Pistol. This is hands down the most broken pistol Fortnite has ever released and can be acquired for about 1200 gold from the NPC Reese at Dirty Docks. While it's not too high in terms of fun quotient, it has amazing features. The Shadow Tracker's defining attribute is its ability to track enemies. If you shoot an enemy with it once, the enemy gets tagged and you can track them for a short period of time. This is an extremely overpowered feature that gives you one of the best advantages a Battle Royale player can have. We saw this mechanic in the Flare Gun a few seasons ago, and the Shadow Tracker is a much better implementation of that feature. Moreover, the pistol is highly accurate, just like the old suppressed pistol, and has the magazine size of a legendary pistol. Okay, Shio, let's talk exotics for a second here. Are you more of like a sniper or shotgun kind of man? 
I'm more of a launcher connoisseur. So the big chill launcher from Caddy Corner, that's what I like, lets you slide into those boxes and or DMs depending on the time of day. But regardless of that, I don't even have to ask you, Pookie. I know you're a sniper rifle type of gal. I mean, you know me so well at this point. It's a little bit uncanny. You know I love the Dragon's Breath Sniper. You have a trio or a, or a squad that you're playing with. You can buy more than one of those now in the game. So if three or four of you have it, it is just utter chaos for everybody on the other side. And that is how I like to keep it. But we got to keep the show going because I sat down with special guests to talk all about the best game in the world. You guessed it, Fortnite. Today, I'm having the chance to sit down with Rojo, Fortnite, World Cup, second place, finisher, extraordinaire pro fortnite player the one and only rojo how are you doing today uh hello yeah i'm doing fine today what about you i'm great thank you so so much for asking thank you so much for talking to me today but first off let's start with something pretty basic hop right into it how did you discover fortnite and what were your first impressions of the game uh how did i discover fortnite actually uh i discovered it when it very first came out and it was like just very the basic like it didn't even have an anti-cheat that's when i first started playing it for a little bit and i was like yeah it doesn't have an anti-cheat it looks fun but PUBG is further because at the time right. PUBG was the like the biggest game the biggest battle royale so i was like fortnite do i like battle royales yeah i can like it let's go to PUBG now so i went to PUBG for a while and then PUBG just had a tons of cheaters in it so one of my irl friends started playing fortnite a lot and he said yo Bro, come play Fortnite, it's like season 3, you have this battle pass and you can get a skin, the, the John Wick skin was it at the time? It's like, you just right. come play Fortnite and I was like, nah bro, that's a kid's game, I'm not gonna play Fortnite. But eventually I uh, I started playing Fortnite because, yeah, well, yeah, I was playing PUBG on my own and it was not that fun anymore. So uh, yeah, that right. was basically how I started with Fortnite and my first impressions, I just thought it was a kid's game. But then, it, Fortnite just has this way of like, getting a hold of you and, and then you become addicted and then it's it's all over from there yeah it's um, it's literally the only game i've been playing for so long i've always had cycles with game where I, like i play a game for uh for a, a longer period of time for like right. six months i played every day and then and then i'm just burned out i even had that with fortnite i was playing till uh season four i think when they first started with uh, the skins where you could level them up through xp and I just got so bored of the game because I was playing so much. And then near the end of season four, I, I, had, I took a break in between. And near the end of season four, I was like, yeah, the skins are nice. And what if I ever start playing again? I kind of still want those skins because they're only for that season. And then, I, and then I got back into it. And that's how I got back into it, basically. Because I also took a break of Fortnite in between. Speaking, I think, a little bit more to the competitive side, because, you know, you've been around for a really long time. You've competed at a lot of huge, huge events, a lot of lands. What are your current thoughts on how the competitive landscape has evolved over the past couple of years? Do you think that Fortnite is in a good state in terms of comp gameplay? And kind of a second part to that question, what would you change if you could? Uh, if it's in a good state, it's in a better state than what it used to be. Uh, at the start, it was it was just not that good at the start. I don't really think they had a proper plan of what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it. But recently, they've made some they've made some pretty good like changes. So like we have the qualifiers for the FNCS. The FNCS yep. is the Fortnite Championship, uh, the main tournament. And now they're actually qualifiers before you could qualify in week one and then you could play week two again. Right. That's not really the point of a qualifier. You need like the teams that qualify need to get out of the tournament. Otherwise, it's not really a qualifier anymore. So mm -hmm. those kind of changes and um, just changing the, the loot pool in Arena, the competitive game mode compared to the normal game mode, that didn't happen before like two years ago. Every new item in the game, we had to play with it as well. So like... Yes. Just them accepting that they need to make some changes for the competitive side of the game is, I think, a really good step into the right direction. Let's talk a little bit about FNCS and the format itself. What are your thoughts on the current season of it? Do you like the trios format or would you like to see them kind of revert back to solos and duos? Uh, I actually really like the trios format as in that's just trios for the entire year. I'm a bit biased though because I think trios is the best game out. So if it was solos or duos, I would have still said the same that it's good that we're sticking to one game mode. But in my opinion, trios is the best game mode, so that's a double plus for me. But yeah, that's definitely a, a step in the right direction. I still think it could use some changes in the point system. The point system this season is a, a bit worse than last season. 
since it rewards people a lot more for getting top 3, I think it's like 5 extra points going from 4th place to 3rd place. Which is just right. too big of a difference because usually mm -hmm. it's like a matter of 1 second. And uh, in the final stage, skills give 2 points, which is I don't think that good either because sometimes you just get those skills like 5 in a row where you barely do damage on somebody and now you're getting rewarded right. way more for it. So it, it could right. definitely still use some changes, but it's uh, yeah, step into the, into the right direction again. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, just to speak a little bit more about the trios format, you mentioned that it's your favorite one. What what exactly do you like about trios? Like, why is it your favorite? Uh, so in solos, it's it's just you, so you you don't have that team communication type of stuff, the teamwork. So right. I don't really like solos because of that. Duos, you have it a bit more, but it's still in duos, you can get away with both playing as a solo and then grouping up uh, once sure. you, every once in a while when it's possible. But like, it's a bit more forgiving in a sense. And trios, it's like just a step extra. You have another player, you have 1500 extra mats, so you often don't need to kill somebody. Like, you can play with what you have. It's like, I think it's a perfect mix of players that want to play aggressive, and then you have teams that want to play a bit bit more passive but still get rewarded for it and then you had yeah. squads back in the day but i feel like squads is just one player too much it's too go too just too much well thank you so much rojo for that excellent advice and for sitting down today talking all things fortnite with me and i will see you on the battle bus <laughs>
that has to be the greatest hot drop segment I think I've ever seen. So low ground better be fire in order to keep up. So without further ado, let's check out our low ground. First up, IK Catcher said they bought the Xenomorph skin just to make this joke. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag on gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. And for all of you out there who haven't seen Spaceballs, now you have an excuse to go watch it. Man, the beginning of that movie is just so funny. The middle just takes me by the heart and the ending. I haven't laughed that hard in so long. But next up, Visitor BR rewrites the ending to Alien vs. Predator. You know, honestly speaking, it's probably not hard to write a different or even better ending than the one that we got. I have to be honest. <laughs> like I wouldn't have wanted that to end any other way but moving on a bad username one keeps sending people to Brazil in shockwave I have to say wherever he sent them I really don't think they're going to be coming back to this dimension anytime soon. According to the facts, uh, I'd probably send them to Brazil. So it's going to be a tough time coming back, you know, traveling, the restrictions. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But next, OMG Solid Snake came across this mystery. our best detectives on this i have to be honest we could uh, try to figure this mystery out for the next 10 years and i still don't think we would solve it but finally john smith 2007 finds out if you mess with the kitty you get the claws You know, Kit warned us. He said something along the lines of, if you mess with me, you're gonna get scratched. But that was a pretty sick, sick 360 no scope from Kit. I mean, he ain't bugging. He's valid for sure. That man was so drippy. I think I saw some YY action ladder stalling in that last shot. But regardless, let's move on from Kit and learn a little bit about his daddy. We've got the story of Meowsicles in point of interest. <laughs> Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2 is widely considered to be the best season of Fortnite's second chapter. Aside from a balanced loot pool, the storyline and its characters are some of the most interesting ones yet. Season 2's story revolved around the fight for control between Ghost and Shadow, and ended with a grand live event where Midas tried to control the storm and failed. Each and every character at the agency had their own unique personality, and the game also offered you choices between various styles of each agent. Today, we'll be taking you through Meowsels, one of the best and most loved characters of season two. When the old island collapsed into a black hole and the new one was discovered, everyone wanted control of it. Two factions called Ghost and Shadow came up in the struggle for power. The ghost agents were characterized by white clothing, while the shadow agents were always dressed in black. Meowsels was one of these agents, and is inferred that he was very loyal to Midas. Along with Midas patting him in the trailer like a pet, he was also seen around gold items pretty often. Midas has been known to have the golden touch, where whatever he touches turns into gold, and Meowsels' backgrounds have always insinuated that a lot of the items belong to Midas. There was a Meowsels on both teams, Ghost and Shadow, and his presence on the island was defined by which team was being chosen more by players via the battle pass. Meowsels is a cat with the body of a human, and a cutscene in the battle pass menu revealed that he was super into weightlifting. He was also super into Lynx, the Catwoman-like skin from Season 7, considering her name was tattooed on his arm. When the season started, Meowsels had his own yacht. 
The yacht was a new POI in Chapter 2 Season 2 and could be found in the ocean north of the main island. At this time, Ghost was winning the battle and you could see the white version of Meowsles roaming around the yacht with Ghost henchmen. He was pretty hostile, but if you disguised yourself as one of his henchmen, he'd fall for it and you could get close to him pretty easily. Meowsles signature weapon was the mythic Piao Piao rifle and you had to eliminate him to obtain it. He also had his own vault on the yacht where he stored some really good loot including a supply drop. During season 2, another famous character was Marvel's Deadpool. Deadpool stayed in his washroom for a long time at the beginning of the season and we're not sure what he was doing until his pistols went missing. And who took them? Meowsles. In a mini quest, players had to find Deadpool's pistols, one of which you could find in Meowsles' quarters. It isn't clear if he stole them or if they were misplaced, but Deadpool wasn't happy about it. He used Twitter to declare that he was taking over the yacht and clearly, Meowsles was in trouble. In the next update, Deadpool had entirely taken over Meowsles' home and put his face all over the yacht. Deadpool was now the boss on the yacht and he even went on to cover Midas's statue with his own mask. Meowsles was kicked out and you could no longer find him there, although for some reason, the ghost henchman did not leave. Meowsles was devastated and had to relocate. You could see him crying at a new unnamed location near Brito Row, but now as a shadow version of himself. I guess grief does take some people over to the dark side. This new location became Meowsles' permanent home. The best part? This place, later named as Caddy Corner, became one of the most iconic places on the Fortnite map. It's been a few seasons since it came out and the yacht has left the game, but Caddy Corner is still standing strong. Meowsles was also shown to be a good character when he rode over Midas with a shark in the season 3 trailer. Midas had flooded the island after all and had revealed his true intentions. The cat also looks pretty happy in the trailer and no longer cries at Caddy Corner. Meowsles later got an upgraded skin in the form of Kit, who every Everyone assumes is his son. We're glad Meowsel's got a happy ending, but did he really steal Deadpool's pistols? I guess we'll never really know for sure. Shio, what is your favorite Meowsel's skin edit style? Uh, for me, it has to be that I believe it's Ghost or Shadow, whichever one is the darker type of cat. A little bit of a competitive advantage, a little bit more menacing as well. But I think Shadow can also get the job done. It's cool. I like it a lot. Uh, what about you, Pookie? Do you delve into cat styles? For me, it has to be golden agent. I mean, who doesn't want to be a golden cat? You know, you can be a regular cat or you can be a gold cat. And if you don't choose gold every single time, I don't know you. But that about does it for us. But for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Nice. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed this victory royale with cheese.